Howdy folks, I'm Score, the Crimson Renegade, and welcome back to Final Fantasy VII. Sorry, I'm a little geekly, I just got through watching the YouTube video. Uh, the CinemaSins guys were, uh, were sending the movie Pixels, Adam Sandler, a video game movie. I've never seen the movie itself, but just for those sins, that movie really did suck. <laughs> anyway, let's move on with this game that doesn't suck. This is Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> um... <clears throat> I told you at the end of the last episode, amongst all that other crap that I told you at the end of the last episode, um, that I was going to meet you here in Wutai because now that I had shown you the location of the last Turtles Paradise newsletter, I was going to show you the items that you get from getting all six Tur Turtles Paradise newsletters. So, you go in here, this is the Turtles Paradise. Go over here to this, uh, into the bar over here. Wait for the uh, bartender to kind of come this direction, and then talk to him. Star. Congrats, you have found all six flyers for the Turtles Paradise. Here's your prize. We get a power source, a guard source, a magic source, a mind source, a speed source, a startle from a cat, a luck source, and a mega elixir. Sorry for that brief break. I had to handle a misbehaving kitty who decided to roll on the desk when she wasn't supposed to. Anyway, we got all those sources. We got a mega elixir. And that's it. So, not really an amazing side quest. It's items aren't really fantastic, and Mega Elixir is always nice to have. But that's that's it. Really is. Um, <clears throat> I didn't actually take time off screen to actually look at my uh, um, enemy skill list to make sure that I had gotten all the enemy skills that I could at this point. But I do want to point out something while I go ahead and check that uh, list real quick. Um, one thing I don't think I mentioned directly was as far as as far as all my steel my, my notes for my most important steals. Um, the the biggest notes I want to let you guys know about is ultimate weapon. <clears throat> um, you can steal various things from from ultimate weapon depending on where he uh, where he is when you uh, when you actually encounter him. If you fight him in if you fight him in Medeal, when I'm talking about fighting him in Medeal. I believe this is actually. Let me check it here real quick. Um, um, I'm not actually sure, so I can't. I guess I should. I guess I can't be sure. Um, this it says this is my notes here. Ultimate weapon Medeal. So I'm not sure if this means Medeal, the, the encounter that you fight him in Medeal, when in, in, as far as part of the storyline, or if he ever uh, flows. You know, sometimes he floats to destination, he'll stop and put that little. little I don't know what he's doing, hovering over a location, powering up some kind of attack or something. Um, I don't know if he ever, if, I don't know if he ever stops at Medeal um, for that. But um, if you fight Ultimate Weapon in Medeal, I'll just say it this way: if you fight Ultimate Weapon in Medeal, you can steal a Curse Ring from him there. Um, it also says Ultimate, Ultimate Weapon various locations, so anywhere else that you fight him, you can steal a Reflect Ring off of him. Now, what I'm not sure about is if you steal a curse ring from him in Medeal, if you can steal steal from him again later, if, uh, or if say you you encounter him in Midgar, you steal a, cur a reflect ring from him in Midgar, and then you encounter him say over Gongaga and battle him there, can you steal another reflect ring from him there? I'm not sure about that. I've never actually taken that much time. Um, I've never actually done any stealing off of him, to be perfectly honest, because usually what he gives is not really that important to me. Um, and finally, as far as ultimate weapon, it says final battle or penultimate battle. The final battle being the one at, Co one at Cosmo Canyon. And then penultimate battle is the one he's talking about, is what, uh, what he's referring to there, or what the notes are referring to there, is the penultimate battle in the uh, Gold Saucer. If you encounter him as the final, in the, in the penultimate battle in the Gold Saucer's battle square, uh, you can actually steal a circlet off of him there. Um, so... This is Orvarius, so there's a chance that depending on where he, uh, depending on where he, where you fight Ultimate Weapon, you can steal a Reflect Ring, a Curse Ring, or a Circle. That, 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 I'll just simplify it for you. There's a chance you can get one of those three items, um, depending on where you encounter him. You can either get a Reflect Ring, a Curse Ring, or a Circlet by stealing from him. Now again, I don't know if it's only a one-time steal uh, throughout the entire game. You can never steal from him again, or you can steal from him every time you encounter him. I don't know for sure. I've never tried, so I can't say for sure for my own personal experience 
But, as far as limit breaks go, or I'm sorry, not limit breaks, um, enemy skills go, I'm going to uh, go over real quick what I've got so far. So I'm going to go to um, Magic, Cloud, enemies. Oh, I guess I should go ahead and show off my setup right now. I did, I did do a little setup change since the last episode because I actually, because now that uh, Cloud's not going to be soloing anything in the uh, Battle Square, I went ahead and set him up for some fighting. <clears throat> As far as gear, he hasn't changed very much. He's got an escort guard and ice ring. I went ahead and put the ice ring on him. That way he's pretty much covered on a whole bunch of different uh, uh, elements. His escort guard nullifies lightning, earth, water, and poison. And the ice ring obviously nullifies ice attacks. Uh, Sid has the Grow Lance, Shinra Alpha, and a water ring to dra drain water attacks. Tifa has God's Hand, Imperial Guard, Ribbons. That hasn't changed too much. Material, can, material setups, restore, lightning, fire, enemy skill for multi-targeting magic, double cut for double, ta double cut attacking, cover because, you know, I want his, his uh, limit break is probably the most powerful that I've got at this point, so I want to use it as often as possible. Poison all, counterattack, magic plus, mostly the counterattack to just to be, uh, and again, again, free damage. I'm not worried about uh, having to steal anymore from anybody, so I don't care if I get, if an enemy gets killed that I don't need. Or, the, or that I want really badly. Magic Plus, just a boost of magic that he's already got. And kind of just for, this is more of a filler material because I don't really need it. Contain and Death Blow. Death Blow again, kind of a filler material. Because I don't like having empty slots. My backup mage is Sid, as always. Restore, all, lightning, all, fire, all. Hades added effect, so it's essentially a ribbon. Lightning elemental and fire elemental. So these, this elemental is three stars, so he'll absorb lightning damage and be immune to fire damage with this elemental. And then of course, like I showed you with the water ring, he'll absorb water attacks. So water, lightning, and fire will be uh, useless against him as far as dealing damage. <clears throat> and then of course, Tifa is my main mage with restore all, lightning all, fire all, ultima, MP absorb, and comet, MP turbo. So she'll be doing most of my, ma my, most of my magic damage. That's my setup there. Now with that done, let's go ahead and take a look at the magic of enemy skills. Alright. <clears throat> okay. I have Frog Song, which uh, causes sleep and frog on one opponent. Uh, it can be learned from pretty much any frog enemy. Uh, the first time you encounter it would be the Touch Me's. The, I think they're kind of yellowish colored frogs. In the forest just uh, west of Gungaga or just south of Cosmo Canyon, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, the Toxic Frog, which I think were green or maybe red frogs, in the Temple of the Ancients. And then you can also encounter an enemy called Christopher in the Northern Cave. The Northern Cave is the final area of the game, which I haven't shown yet, but I will be pretty soon. But you can also get, if you haven't got it from those frogs yet, you can get it from uh, from, the, from there as well. Um, the Mostly the uh, the easiest way to get it is from the touch me's uh, in the uh, Gungaga area forests because you can't return to the Temple of the Ancients once it's been crushed by uh, solving the puzzle. Uh, level 4 Suicide causes critical and small. What it means is it, it brings you down to critical health status and creature sends you down to mini size or small size to, enemy, to characters with levels of multiples of 4. So in other words, it will only inflict the, the critical small status to characters or enemies that have a level of factor of 4. So if your enemy or character is level 16, they will be affected by critical and small. If they're level 15, it's not a factor of 4, it will not be, they won't be affected by loose miss. However, if you're trying to learn this enemy skill, <clears throat> the character trying to learn the enemy skill does not have to be a factor of 4 in order to learn. As long as, it hit, as, long as they cast it on them, the enemy skill will learn it, hit or miss. Uh, we have also got Magic Hammer. Drains 100 out of MP out of, every, out of every opponent. Well, that that kind of a it's kind of a misleading description there. So it drains out of every opponent, one opponent at a time. It's it only targets one enemy, but it will drain 100 MP out of the target. Um, now it will continue to drain 100 MP whether it's got MP or not. But the MP that you get out of it will depend on how much MP it's got left. As I've already explained before, if you use if, if your target has only say 34 MP left and you use Magic Hammer on it, it may say 100 MP taken away from the enemy, but the character that casts the Magic Hammer will only get 34 MP, because that's all, it's had left. That's all the enemy has left. Um, <clears throat> Magic Hammer can be learned from the Razor Weed in the Wutai area. 
So I've, I may have shown you that just south of Wu Tai, there's a little, uh, a little tiny grass-looking guy. There's like a bunch of it looks like just sorts of little tiny strings of, of grass held together with a small bond or some kind at the bottom. You can learn mag you can learn magic hammer from that. Uh, next is White Wind restores HP and status to every, every ally. The uh, thing about the White Wind is that the amount of healing that it does is equal to its current the character's current HP. You might have noticed this during the uh, battle in the uh, battle square that I did uh, I think the last episode. <clears throat> say, uh, even though Cloud has 3,940 3, HP, uh, say he's damaged and he's only got like 2,400 HP. So he got, let's say he got 2,410 just to put a random, a random number out there. Whenever he casts White Wind, all allies will receive 2,410 uh, points of healing because that's how much HP he has. And of course, like I said, it removes all status ailments. I think it also removes some positive status ailments as well. Um, but I know for sure that it does remove uh, Fury and or Sadness. So if you're trying to use those to adjust your limit break gain or defense or something, you uh, you will lose those uh, the Fury and or Sadness status if you cast White Wind. Uh, White Wind can be learned from the Zem Zealot. It's uh, from the Junon area, and from the Wind Wing in the World Maze. The Zem Zealot was a kind of big green creature with a big green. Uh, uh, even though that one, I guess you can call him wings, because he does eventually fly. But he looks kind of like, more like a living cactus, in my opinion. He's just big green guy, big wing, big white, big green wings, and that's where, and you'd have to, and that's where you. That, that's the enemy you learn it from in the Junon area. Um, it is a self targeted uh, ability so in order to actually learn white wind you would have to manipulate the enemy and then force him to cast it on your uh, on your party in order for them to learn it on their limit on their enemy skills and then the wind wing for the whirlwind maze is the enemy you encounter during the maze when you gotta, you gotta try to pass through those barriers if you hit the barrier you bounce off it then you encounter an enemy that enemy there I believe is called the wind wing and they you can get the white wind from that as well I don't know if the the wind wing is can be manipulated because I've never tried, but uh, I would assume that if it's available um, from the wind wing, that I would think you'd be able to manipulate it. Uh, next on the list is one of my favorite skills, Big Guard. Uh, it ha it adds both barriers, barrier and shell, uh, which is barrier, which is physical damage prevention or redu reduction, and then M barrier in the original game, or the sh I think it's called shell with my mod. Uh, which reduces uh, magic damage, and then haste to all allies, which I've shown over and over again, so you guys know how that works. And when you learn that from the beach plug in Coastal del Sol on the coastal areas <clears throat> near the ghost, near the gold saucer, near the coastal del Sol area or gold saucer area, whichever one you want to call it, but it's the beach, uh, the beach areas, the coastal areas uh, outside of Coastal del Sol. Uh, again, it is a self-targeting ability. So in order to learn Big Guard, you have to manipulate a beach plug and then have it cast mid guard on your allies. You can also get it from the Wolfmeister at the North Corral train during huge material sequence. Um, if you remember when we were chasing down the train where that had the huge material on it from North Corral, uh, the Wolfmeister I think was a tall guy. He's basically a remake of what they call the Iron Giant. He's a real big guy he carries a sword. I think he was kind of a red color maybe can't remember for sure, but real big guy, one one enemy that you encounter. Um, you can get the you can get the big guard from him as well, but I don't know if the Wolfmeister can be uh, manipulated. Again, it's on my notes here that it can be, so I would assume that you can get big guard from the Wolfmeister. So I would assume that if you can get it from him, I have to assume these notes are correct. That if you can get it from him, he can be uh, manipulated in order to get it. Um, next, we don't have yet because the enemy can only cast from the Northern Cave. Same with that one. Okay, next we have Death Force. Makes one ally immune to death, with the exception of Knife, apparently. Thank you, uh, fucking Tonberry. I hate Tonberry. I really do. They're the bane of my existence in the Final Fantasy series. <clears throat> uh, makes one ally immune to death. It's supposed to, it's supposed to prevent instant death to any ally that it's cast on. Apparently, like I showed you and like I learned, it doesn't work on the Tonberry's Knife. But it can only be learned from one enemy, and that is the Adamantami. Assuming I'm pronouncing it right. Adamantum, Adamantimai, 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 whatever. It's the, it's the giant turtle that we see in the, I think it's also in the coastal areas of Wu Tai. So you can, you, also, you can also steal an armor from them, the Adamant Bangle from them. You can also learn Death Force 
from that uh, enemy as well. But again, it is another self-targeting ability, so you'll have to manipulate the Adamantami in order to force him to cast de uh, Death Force on your ally. And since it is single targeting, you'll have to cast it on each ally that has a enemy skill material. Assuming you don't have two enemy skills or enemies of material on one person. Um, next is Flamethrower. Causes fire damage to any single opponent. It's a, a, a rather weak fire attack, single targeting of course. Can be learned from the Arc Dragon in the Mithril Mine. It's a very skinny, uh, little skinny dragon kind of guy that you see in the, in the Mithril Mine. And then the Dragons and Mountain of Bell. Uh, basically it's kind of the opposite of the Arc Dragon if you will. Dra the, the dragons of Mountain Bell were the really big guys. You could actually steal, I want to say it was the... Is it the dragon armor, maybe? Or you could actually steal another armor from the dragons as well. But you could also get the flamethrower from that as well if you haven't learned from the Arc Dragon. Next we have the laser. Lessons opponents HP by one half. Um, essentially it's a demi skill. Uh, I believe it's actually uh, gravity elemental. Uh, what it does is, like I said, lessens opponents HP by half. It takes their current HP and cuts it in half, and you can cast it over and over and over again to cut their HP by half if they're susceptible to it. I find this ability very useless because a lot of enemies are are immune to that effect. So the gravity material as well as laser are um, useless against enemies because they don't uh, they aren't susceptible to that kind of attack. But it, but it literally cuts their health in half. So unless they're actually truly weak to gravity attacks laser cannot kill an enemy. So say they've got, you know, they, they learned it all, this was way another way to explain it. They just cut the HP in half over and over and over again. So if you've done two HP, cast laser does one damage. If they have one HP left, it also it also rounds down. So if they ha if you have nine if you have uh, one HP, it's not going to do one more HP of damage that would kill it. So it just does zero damage. So that's just how that's how laser works, that's how gravity works. Each of, the, each of the gravity skills does an increment of damage. Quarter, half, so on and so forth. Next is a very good ability, at least early game. Matra Magic, a multi-targeting, very inexpensive ability. Non-elemental damage to all opponents. That's the other great thing about it. It's non-elemental. So it's multi-targeting, uh, powerful er in early game, and not very expensive uh, as far as MP. It only costs 8 MP. Multi-targeting, non-elemental, so nobody's going to be immune to it. Unless they're immune to magic in general. Um, can be learned, oh by the way, I want to go back to the laser for a second, I forgot to get it from. <clears throat> you can get it from the Death Claw um, in the Corel Prison. You remember when you're heading to meet uh, D uh, Dine with Barrett? Uh, it can be encountered in that like junkyard area with all the trashed cars and stuff. You can encounter the Death Claw there. The enemy there looks like, kind of like a walking spider, if you will. He's just, it's just a, a bigger upper body, and then it's got claws on this, uh, coming off like a shell on the back. Uh, that will uh, that will that is how you can obtain laser. Uh, it is not a self-targeting or ally-targeting ability. It doesn't st a target an enemy, so it's likely that laser can will be cast on your ally. But some but at that point you should have just gotten the manipulate material off of Kate Sith, so you should be able to manipulate and get laser rather easily from them. Uh, Matra magic uh, can be gotten you know, it's the non-elemental damage to all enemies. You learn that from the Custom Sweeper in the Midgar area, which we did, which we did learn, as you can see. Um, it's those robotic, it's those robots, robotic machines, kind of, kind of redundant there. It's those robots inside the Midgar area. Um, you also learn from the Death Machine in Junon. I'm not really sure what the Death Machine is. I'm not sure where you would encounter it in Junon. Um, um, death Machine in Junon. Uh, I'm gonna guess they're referring to um, Junon when you're um, when you're in control of Barrett and Kate Sith and potentially Yuffie um, right after Meteor has come and your party's been split and clouds in the live stream and stuff. <clears throat> I don't recall ever seeing an um, uh, enemy called Death Machine, but it's apparently in Junon. And then you also get it from the Bull Motor in Corel Prison. The uh, the Bull Motor was kind of like a one-wheeled uh, motorcycle, if you will. It had like a giant spiked plate on the front, a big wheel on the back, and, uh, and it casts uh, Matra Magic as well uh, from the Corral Prison area. Uh, next is the ability, unfortunately, I did not encounter the enemy that, get, that gives it to you, at least not yet. Um, and it, it, you can encounter it in two areas. One's in the Gaius Cliff, 
which you can also encounter it again in the Northern Cave. So I might be able to get it before the end of the game. If not, no big deal. I'll go ahead and tell you what it is. It's called Bad Breath. It is probably one of the most not notorious and hated uh, skills that can be cast from an enemy. Uh, it is learned from the Marlboro, which is another classic Final Fantasy enemy that's known for casting this Bad Breath ability. It inflicts multiple status ailments on your, on your, on your entire party. Um, in this game, it casts Poison, Confusion, Sleep, Silence, Small, and Frog on your, uh, on your entire party. Um, in other games, there are other negative status ailments it casts on you. And typically, I just like to say Bad Breath casts them all. Uh, sometimes it not always is all of them. Uh, and th there's times that some of, them, some of the afflictions don't actually stick. Uh, but I just like to say that whenever I do encounter Bad Breath, that I encounter that inflicts them all, because when you get hit by it, it's going to feel like all of them are on you. Berserk, um, Curse, you know, in, in, some, in some games that have, bur uh, skill, uh, they have uh, um, status ailments like Berserk and Curse and those kind of things. And Bad Breath will cast them. <clears throat> the Marlboro can be learned, can be can be encountered in Gaius Cliff and the Northern Cave, which is the last area of the game. So hopefully, I actually encounter the Marlboro when I go back to the Northern Cave or when I go to the Northern Cave. I cannot actually get back to Gaius Cliff at this point in the game. Once the uh, barrier uh, around Sephiroth goes up, you can't actually go back up to Gaius Cliff. Now that the barrier is down. I don't know if you can go back there or not, but it's a, it's a long, hard way to get back to the Ice Cliff. You have to t you have to basically land at the. Um, you can't actually take the high wind to the Gaius Cliff or to the Great Glacier or even to Icicle Inn. You have to land in a grassy area near Icicle Inn, walk to Icicle Inn, which is kind of a long walk. Then you got to walk through Icicle Inn, take the snowboarding thing back down to the Great Glacier. Follow the map up to Holzoff's uh, cabin, and then get to the guy's cliff. That, uh, that took a lot of walking and a lot of time, so I'm not going to bother trying to go out and get it that way. I'll just hope that I encounter him somewhere in the Northern Cape. If I don't, it's no big deal. It's what I won't be able to show. <clears throat> Moving on. <coughs> we have Beta. Fire damage on all opponents. Uh, a very powerful fire attack. I would say it's probably about as powerful as... Probably the third tier fire attacks, Fyraga, um, because they deal about 3,000 damage, I think, on an enemy that's, that's, that's normally not, not really weak to it, but uh, it's not weak to it or strong to it. Um, and I would say it's not as quite as powerful as the fourth level uh, fire ability, Flare. I don't think it's as powerful as that. Uh, it can only be learned from one enemy, and that is the Midgar Zolem in the swamp near the Chocobo Farm on the world map. We already know this. Um, while my technique for getting it is difficult to pull off, um, getting it at that point in the game makes a lot of the early stuff very easy, even though it is an expensive ability. Um, but it can be gotten later in the game at a much easier rate. I mean, once you get into the level, probably level 30, probably level 30s, you'd be able to go back to, uh, the swamp and easily, easily be able to, uh, get uh, beta from him without even having to you know have to do the whole put everybody in the back row inflict them all with sadness and and all this all this whole strategies that I had to use when I was trying to do it at level 12 or 13 or whatever level I was um, so if you haven't gotten it by the time you reach disc 3 or part 3 uh, you should be able to get it very easily now you should be able to get it probably by part 2 disc 2 moving on in you, uh, we have Aqualung, water damage on our opponent, so essentially it's the it's equally as powerful as a beta, but is the water element. And since you don't actually have water uh, elemental magic material, you don't have like a water, so you don't have water, 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 water how do you pronounce that? Um, this is the closest you're going to get to straight up water magic attack without using a summon. So Aqualung, it's all targeting, which is nice. Uh, you can learn it from the Harpy, which... I think I think the person the name is is misleading. The enemy looks more like a chimera because it has multiple heads and stuff. But you know, I digress. You can learn it from the gold saucer area, more specifically the desert area of the gold saucer. So make sure you're right under the gold saucer in the desert area. You can only leave harpy there. It can cast aqualung on you, but it can also be manipulated to cast aqualung on you if it doesn't do it itself. And then of course Genova life, the Genova that you fight when Eris is killed by Sephiroth 
in the Forgotten Capital. Uh, she cast that as well. Um, and then finally, Serpent apparently can cast it as well. And Serpent is a, a really long, slender, tall enemy that you encounter in a sunken Gelnik airplane. Um, I believe it looks kind of like... Well, no, it doesn't really look like anything. It's just a long, really skinny uh, snake with like long kind of fins on the bottom. Um, that is the serpent. You can get Aqualung from him as well. Um, next on the list is Trine, the lightning version of Beta and Aqualung, of course. Trine can be learned from actually um, uh, multiple enemies. Uh, can be learned from the Materia Keeper Mountain of Bell, which I got really lucky that it was the ver first ability he cast when I, when I engaged him in battle. There's been times where I've had to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait before he cast it. I got lucky that he actually cast it the first time, which was really nice. Uh, because the Materia Keeper uh, was a boss, you can manipulate him. So, uh, remember it's Mountain of Bell. He was the only, he's actually the only boss you actually see on the, the map screen before you actually encounter him. So, then um, <clears throat> also, Godo, uh, the uh, top of the pagoda, the uh, top of Yuffie's pagoda, the, the Wutai pagoda during Yuffie's uh, ascending uh, little thing, when she's doing the one-on-one -on -one battle with everybody. Godo can cast Trine as well. Um, <clears throat> there's also the Stilva in Gaius Cliff. Basically, it's a it's a red repaint of the Materia Keeper in Gaius Cliff. Um, it casts Trine as well as Magic Breath. So if you can't, if you didn't learn trying from Materia Keeper, um, that the the, the still that guy is clear is probably the next time you'll be able to learn it. Um, it's, there's a note. There's a note here. Be careful. This is the one enemy skill that is missable. You may want to save the go to battles and won't tie until you are fully prepared. Um, okay, I, I get what this note means. Um, since the Materia Keeper is a one-time boss, once you kill him, you don't get to fight him again. Godo is also a boss. There's one time that you beat him, you won't fight him again. And while Stilva is a, is a common enemy, you, only, you're fight, you can only fight him in the Gaius Cliff area, an area that you cannot return to. So, essentially, if you didn't get it from the Materia Keeper, and you didn't get uh, trying from Stilva and Gaius Cliff, you might want to save... Um, the Godo battle until you make sure you're powerful enough to be able to handle it. If you're if you're worried about uh, losing, so if you didn't get it from the Materia Keeper and you didn't get the encounter of Stilvan Gaius Cliff, Godo would be your last opportunity. Once you kill Godo, you can't get it again. So it truly is one of the few enemy skills that can be completely missed because Stilva is the only common enemy that you, that you can encounter that has it. But again, it's Gaius Cliff, an area that you can't go back to once you clear it. <coughs> <clears throat> and now we also have Magic Breath, which does fire, ice, and lightning damage on all opponents. So essentially it combines Trine, Beta, and, well, not really Aqualung, because Aqualung is water, not ice. It's two different elements here. But uh, fire, ice, and lightning on all enemies. Uh, it, it's more powerful than Trine, Beta, and Aqualung, mostly because it combines all three of them. Um, it can be also learned from the Stilva and Gaius Cliff. But it can also be learned from an enemy called Parasite in the Northern Caves. So, um, it, you know, it's nice that you can get two enemy skills from one enemy: the Stilva, the Trine, and Magic Breath. Next is all question marks. Damage does damage equal to the user's max, max HP to, a, to HP. Uh, costs three MP, and what it does is it damages the enemy based on the difference between your current HP and your maximum HP. So, let's say you have, let's use straight numbers here to make this easier. Let's say you have 4,000 HP. If you, and you have, your damage, you have 2,500 HP, or 2,000 HP. Well, let's go, let's go 1,000 HP for better numbers. You have 1,000 HP, your max HP is 4,000. You cast uh, qu the question mark ability here, it will deal 3,000 damage to the enemy because that's the difference between your current HP and your maximum HP. So, you can, that actually ability is actually pretty damn powerful if you have a high uh, amount of HP and your character is taking a lot of damage. So you say you've got 9,000 HP and you've got 10 damage, you're going to deal 8,990 damage to the enemy when you cast a question mark. And it's guaranteed, cannot be blocked. Um, I don't think it's a, I don't think it can be I don't think it's a, any enemy can be a, is immune to it. Um, 
and you know defense doesn't block it so it's not gonna be reduced by defenses um, and I don't think it misses I don't think it can miss again unless it's probably an enemy that can't that's immune to I'm going to assume I'm assuming this is considered a magic attack, so I'm assuming if they're immune to magic, they won't take damage from this question mark ability, but I can't say for sure. Um, they can be learned from the Jersey, which is that uh, scale that I showed you, the scale enemy, that it uh, cha that uh, as you hit it with physical or magic attack, actually changes its appearance, and also changes what abilities that it uses. And also we learned from the Behemoth, Insectorate, Underground, and Midgar. So, the Behemoth is that big pink enemy, the pink or purplish enemy that I showed you, it can also um, teach you question mark, but I don't think the behemoth can be manipulated. Um, uh, in case you're curious what I'm talking about, Sacred Underground, it is the area that you are in when you're heading to the Junon Cannon. After it's been fired, you're trying to stop Hojo from firing it again. That, er that area there is called the Sacred Underground. Alright, next is Goblin Punch, non elemental damage on any one opponent. It costs 3 MP. You can learn it. No, that's not the wrong. That's the wrong one. You can only learn damage from one opponent. You, it's cost zero MP. It didn't cost any MP at all, really. I didn't know that. Uh, obviously, you learn it from the Goblin on the Goblin Island. And I've shown that to you. You have to go to the kind of northwestern part of the uh, world where you see little tiny or northwestern, northeastern part of the world. Where you see two little tiny islands. You want to go to the southern island that has a forest area. Go into that forest area, and you'll encounter goblins there. That'll be the only place you can encounter goblins. You can either manipulate them to have them cast Goblin Punch on you, or just be patient, wait for them to cast it on you themselves. Uh, it's not very, it's not a very damaging ability, but it is one to have because it's part of the list. So, all right. Next up is the uh, ever elusive for me Choke a Buckle. I am not going to spend time trying to get it because it was a pain in the ass trying to get it the first time. Reference episode probably 15 or so to see what I'm talking about. I don't remember the actual episode number, but um, I had a lot of trouble trying to get Chocobo during that episode. Um, it does not elemental damage on any one opponent and only costs 3 MP. It can only be learned from a Chocobo. The trick to it is it's not just any Chocobo. Uh, the Chocobo has to be a level of which is a multiple of 4, feed it some Mimic, mimic Greens or Silken Screens, and then use level 4 Suicide. Uh, typically, the, uh, the the earliest you can get it is the Chocobos outside the Chocobo Corral, and they have to be paired with, I believe it's the Alpha Dunks, the, the two uh, blue elephants, I believe. Um, that Chocobo, that, that Chocobo will always be a level that is a factor of four. So when you feed them a Mil Mimit or Silcus Green, then once while they're eating on it, cast level four Suicide on uh, on the Chocobo, and it will respond with that, it will respond with Chocobuckle on that enemy. Unfortunately, since it is single targeting, you will have to have each of your different party members cast level 4 suicide in order to, in order to learn it. So, tricky tricky part, but try to break it down for you. Step one, have Mimic or Silken Screens at the top of your list. Two, have someone with the level 4 uh, suicide ready to, ready to uh, use level 4 suicide. Throw a Mimit or Silcus Green. I prefer, I, I would recommend the Silcus over the Mimit Green because the Mimit Green doesn't seem to hold the Chocobo very long. Because throughout uh, many times I've used a Mimit Green, the Chocobo will bend down, eat it for like a half a turn, and it stand right back up. And you have to cast level four, level 4 Suicide while the Chocobo is distracted on the Green. If they're standing up not distracted on the Green, they will not ch cast Chocobo. They'll just attack and run. Um, so... Put it put, put the silk mimic or silk screen, whichever you choose to use on the top of the list. Throw it as soon as the battle starts at the chocobo. Immediately cast level four suicide, and you've got chocobo because it, it'll cast immediately on whoever cast level four suicide on the choke on the chocobo. So you have to do it for each uh, for each choco for each uh, enemy skill that you have. Unless you put like I said like I said before, unless you have two enemy skills or multiple enemy skills in one person, then it's not learned that skill. <clears throat> Next is an ability is uh, if, if ability learned from an enemy in the Northern Cave, so we'll skip that one for now. Next is Death Sentence. This pronounces Death Sentence on any one opponent. We've seen what we've seen this ability. What it does it cast a giant skull over the head of an enemy, and then you have a 60 second countdown timer. If, that's, if the if the battle is not ended or that character dies before that 60 second countdown timer is up, death appears. Instant death on that enemy or on that character. Uh, you can get that from the guy from the Gee Specter in the Cave of the Gee. Um, it can. Be, I think the key specters are not uh, cannot be um, 
uh, manipulated, so you'll have to just be patient with them cast around it, which it's a pretty high cast, it's a pretty high uh, uh, cast rate, so they usually have no problem casting it, so it should be pretty easy to get from them. You can also get it from the sneaky step in the Cave of the Gee, the kind of four four legged, uh, kind of skinny looking version of red, if you, if you ask me. And there's an enemy called Bound Fat in the Coral Valley, so. Um, I believe the bound fat they're like short little guys and they look like they look like really pissed off moogles or something they're really short fat they kind of bounce around like this and i think it's actually a final attack they'll uh if you if you kill certain bound fats uh some of them before they actually disappear will cast death sentence on you before they disappear all right next is an ability from an enemy in the northern cave so i'm not going to show what that is yet uh next is not on this particular uh, Enemy skills must be on Tifas or Sids. I mean, no, it must be Tifas. I only wait. Only have one enemy skill equipped. That's not good. Uh, yep. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So, um, that might be the original fire. Um, well, uh, <laughs> I'd rather have two people have uh, elemental uh, or enemy skill on them. So. Uh, I guess I'll take off this all material. Uh, I'll take this all material place with enemy skill. I want two characters with enemy skill material because uh, those are going to get abilities on it. So anyway, so we've got to go to Sid's uh, enemy skill here because this enemy skill can only be cast on one target at a time, and the enemy that casts it um, casts it as a final attack. I'm referring, of course, to Shadow Flare, big non-elemental damage on any one opponent. It is non-elemental. It is extremely damage dealing. Costs 100 MP uh, and can be learned from Ultimate Weapon, which we already, which we know that uh, he casts it as his final attack, and he will cast it on whoever deals the killing blow to him. So, in order to learn it the first time from him, you need to make sure that whoever kill, whoever kill, deal the striking blow, the killing strike to Ultimate Weapon, has the, as an enemy skill on it, has an enemy skill material on that person. Uh, you can also learn it from Ruby Weapon. Uh, and also from the Dragon Zombie in the Northern Cave, which is another enemy we haven't encountered yet because we haven't been in the Northern Cave. And Safer Sephiroth, which is one of uh, the final bosses, final forms. <clears throat> so, at this point in the game, um, probably Ruby Weapon would be your best choice for trying to learn it. Problem with it is, um, he obviously is not manipulable, he can't be manipulated. So he's, uh, he's not going to, and it's very hard to guarantee that he's going to cast it. Um, and the way that he the way he works is he usually if you have three members of your party when you engage him he'll 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 eject two of them from the battle so you're stuck with just one character you got to hope that one has an enemy skill that doesn't already have shadow flare on it so this shadow flare is actually pretty hard to get um, and the only common enemy that you'll encounter will be the dragon zombie in the northern cave and uh, we'll try to get it from there for the other for the other uh, um, enemy skill material. But if we don't, at least we got it here. We did, we did, have, we did get it at least once. And really, the uh, battle against Ultimate Weapon is actually probably the easiest way to get it. Because the Dragon Zombie is kind of a rare enemy sometimes. And then finally, there's no, and then we have one, one left, which is an enemy that casts it. Um, um, an enemy that casts it from the Northern Cave. So... Basically, with the exception of Chocobuckle, and I don't check my list for sure, yeah, with the exception of Chocobuckle, every ability that's left that I have not learned can be learned from enemies in the Northern Cave. Which is where we're very close to actually going to do now. Um, okay, uh, with that said... Let me go ahead and uh, depart. And I've shown off all the enemy skills. There's no, I mean, you, there's no more um, impor important seal that needs to be done. Uh, I do have the manipulate material on somebody. I believe. I think I put it on cloud. No, I don't have the manipulate material. Okay, I want the manipulate material on somebody. So I place death below with manipulate because some of these abilities may be easier to, le to uh, learn if they have the manipulate material on them. Of course, I could also, re uh, if I wanted to, I could replace the ice ring here with the hypno crown, which increases the manipulation rate. But I'm not too worried about it. I think uh, the manipulation rate is fine as is, and not having too much trouble with it. Okay, 
that's all the enemy skills. I've already shown off how to get all the uh, limit break items with the, exception, with the exception of clouds. I've shown you, I've told you how to do it though. Um, so, with, with, so with what's left, we need to do the, we need to do a little bit of the Chocobo side quest. So, um, I'm going to uh, grab my notes again and make sure I get all my notes correctly and, and, and go through it. And then I will meet you at the first location that we're going to do our, we're going to, the first step of the uh, Chocobo side quest. So again, we're not going to do the entire side quest. We're going to do just like the very, very beginning of it, just a little bit of it. What I'm, what I'm looking forward to get is I want to get a mountain chocobo. That's all I'm going to try to get in this, uh, this playthrough right now is just get a mountain chocobo because I want to get some of the uh, um, materials in those materia caves, and they can only be gotten by using a mountain chocobo. So I will meet you at our first destination to to start that part of the side quest in the next episode of Final Fantasy VII. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the links at the end of this video for more of my videos. And thanks so much for watching. I'm Score, the Crimson Renegade. I'll see you later.